All right, here's our video for writing trig equations from graphs. And there's a few things I want to say at the outset. The first one is that you'll notice that our coordinate planes are arranged differently than our previous lessons. They are, the graph is already shifted, but notice it, the x, the origin here is not starting at 0, 0. It's already, it's starting at its shifted locations. So you'll see it's starting at pi over 4 on the x-axis and negative 4 on the y-axis. And so we'll talk about how to read the graph from there, but I did want to bring that to your attention first. And then another thing I've already done um, at the beginning of the video is I have some notes here that I'm going to be referring to. So if you want to pause the video and write those down, uh, these are just some tips for reading the graphs. Our goal here is to read the graph and write an equation for it. And some tips I have for you here is the A value is our amplitude, and that's the distance from the midline to a maximum point or a minimum point. And we can see the midline here, and we can see the max and the midpoints. So we just have to calculate that distance. D is the vertical shift of the graph, and so that's going to be the y value of our new midline. So for example, we see this midline here and that its value is negative 1, so the graph has shifted down to negative 1. C represents our horizontal shift left to right, so it's going to be the x value of this first point, because that's where the new point, the 0, 0, has shifted to pi over 4. And then B is for our horizontal stretch or compression, and we have this formula here, 2 pi over p, where p is one cycle's length. So an original cycle is going to be 2 pi. We're going to divide it by the length now of one cycle, and that's going to tell us the ratio of it, its horizontal stretch or compression. All right, so, and then I also have up here, remember that sine graph starts at the midline, and cosine graph starts above or below. So it usually starts at positive 1 above the midline, but if it has a reflection, it would start at negative 1 below the midline. So if you're looking at these three graphs here, um, you can see that this one starts at the midline, so that's a sine graph. This one starts at midline, that's sine. But this one starts above the midline, so that's a cosine. And our goal, if you're looking at your directions, is to write a sine equation and a cosine equation for these graphs. So remember, cosine is just a shifted version of sine. And so we're going to talk about how to do that as well. All right, so let's put all that together for this first graph. Um, let's start with our a value, our amplitude, that's the distance from the midline to a max or a min. So if I'm going from 2 to negative 1 and I was just counting the distance between there, that would be 3. So this distance tells me that A is 3 spaces, so my amplitude is 3. This midline right here at negative 1 is, instead of the midline being at 0, the graph has been shifted down to negative 1. So that's my vertical shift, so D is negative 1. And then the period length is, so here's how I do this. I first figure out my five points for a cycle. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that is my mid, max, mid, min, mid. And the difference here is pi over 4, to 5 pi over 4. So that is my period length so 5 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4 or just pi. So my period length is pi and I need that to find my B value. So the formula for our B value is 2 pi over the period, well, we just discovered that our period was pi. So those pi's cancel, leaving me 2. So my b value is 2. So now I have my a, b value, my d value, 
and my C value is going to come from this pi over 4. So if my very first point is at pi over 4 positive instead of 0, I know that the graph has shifted to the right positive pi over 4, which means my C value is negative pi over 4 because it shifted to the right positive, so my C value was the opposite. So I have enough information now to write my sine equation. So the A value is 3, the B value was 2, times parentheses x minus pi over 4, and then minus 1 for my D value. Now here's how I'm going to write a cosine value for this. I'm going to just find one cycle that is the shape of cosine. So we talked about how cosine starts at uh, above the midline. So if I just pick five points here for one cycle of cosine, I'm going to just start here. So that starts above the line. So one, two, three, four, five. So most of the variables are going to be the same for cosine. The amplitude hasn't changed. The midline hasn't changed. And the period hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the horizontal shift. So the only thing I really need to change in this equation is this, change this to cosine and change this to pi over 2. Okay. So if you're feeling confident, maybe just pause the video and try this next problem by yourself. If you're not feeling like a ninja yet, just stay with me for this one and then you can try three by yourself. All right, so this graph is starting at midline, so we're going to start this as a sine graph. And you'll notice that it dips down this time as it begins. That means we have a reflection over the x-axis. And that means my A value is going to be negative, okay? Um, so I'm going to just make a note to myself here. A is negative. So my A value is the distance between the midline and a max point. So from negative 4 to negative 2, the difference there is two spaces. So my amplitude is negative 2. Well, it's 2, but we're going to make it negative. Um, well, I maybe I don't want to, I don't feel comfortable making that negative. So if it's a distance, it's just going to be 2, and we'll make it negative in the equation. This midline, negative 4, is my D value, my vertical shift. Starts at 0, but now it's at negative 4, which means it shifted down 4. So D is negative 4. My C value is the horizontal shift, so we can tell from this first point that the 0, 0 point has been shifted to negative pi over 3. That means my equation is going to be a positive pi over 3. And then we need to figure out our period length. So I'm going to count five points, mid, min, mid, max, min, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the difference is from pi over 3 to negative pi over 3. So I'm just going to subtract those. Pi over 3 minus negative pi over 3. This is a plus plus situation. 1 third plus 1 third is 2 thirds pi. So my period is 2 pi over 3. Now that doesn't go into my equation. I use it to calculate B. So B is, so my formula for that is 2 pi over P. So 2 pi over 2 thirds pi. M dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to flip 2 pi over 3 and make it 3 over 2 pi. The two pi's cancel, giving me just 3. So B is 3. So I've got my A value 
D, C, and B. So here's how my equation is going to go. My amplitude was 2, but we talked about how it needs to be negative because it dipped down first instead of going up. So that means it's a reflection, a reflection over the x-axis. Sine times my B value of 3, parentheses x plus pi over 3 because it went left, and then minus 4. And then for my cosine value, um, cosine starts below the midline, so I'm going to start with this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, the only thing changing here is from sine to cosine and changing the horizontal shift. So it's going to be a positive pi over 6 instead of a negative. Everything else is the same. And now you pause the video and try the last problem by yourself. Okay, here is my work for number 3. Um, our amplitude is 4 because the difference between 3 and 7 is 4. My D value is 3 because the midline shifted to positive 3. And my horizontal shift is it went to negative 4 pi. So my C value is going to be negative 4 pi, which is going to make it a positive in my equation. Um, my first equation that I made was the cosine because this very first point is starting above the midline. So that's a cosine graph. It's in the positive direction, so there's no reflection. So I counted five points, one, two, three, four, five. And my first period goes from negative 4 pi to 0. So subtracting those, I did 0 minus negative 4 pi. That's a plus plus, so that length is 4 pi. Then I use that to find my B value, 2 pi divided by the period. So 2 pi divided by 4 pi, the pi's cancel. 2 over 4 is a half, so that's my B. And then I wrote my cosine equation first. So A times A, sorry, A cosine and then B parentheses X plus 4 pi plus my 3. Then I switched over to make my sine graph. So a sine one cycle of sine, I wanted, I wanted to start at the midline. So I went to my first midline point and then counted five. One, two, three, four, five. So then I noticed that if I'm just looking at this section, so I'm starting at the midline and it dips below first. That means for this cycle, my sine is, my A is negative, right? Because it dipped below instead of starting above. So every so I've got a negative a value, and then the only other thing that changes is my horizontal shift. This cycle starts at negative 3 pi, so I'm going to have a positive 3 pi for my equation. And you might be thinking, well, what if I started my sine or, or any graphic for any sine or cosine at a different spot? So for example, now this is just an aside. We're done with the problem. But let's say I had started my sine cycle at this midline point. So I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, at this one, sine is has a positive A value. It's not a reflection. But the other thing that would, so your A would be positive, but look, that starts at a different horizontal shift. And so you'd have to reflect that into your equation. So you may have noticed you can come up with infinitely many sine or cosine equations depending on where you're starting your cycle and your counting pattern. So just keep that in mind. That is, that is a thing.